traditional organization drives efficiency whereas data driven organization drives intelligence right traditional organizations take pride in the assets right data driven organization pushes faxes and traditional organizations look for customer loyalty sure data driven organization looks for customer empowerment The world today contains an unimaginably vast amount of data. So how does an organization build customer centricity and hyper personalization? In the rocket ship experience today we are talking to Ramesh Shanmugunathan who is the chief information officer at the John Keels group about hyper personalization of products. So Ramesh good to have you here. Nice uh, to be back. and uh, we're talking about data and potentially how we can leverage data to hyper personalize customer experiences right like but but let's start start with the foundational thing which is which is data you know from an era when everything was in paper and and very difficult to decipher we've gone to an era where data is fairly super abundant if you're a medium sized or large company particularly super abundant data but how, how, how do you start in a basic sense approach this uh, if you have the data what do you do so i think uh, the key thing uh, shamir is you look at data as a as a probably a raw in the raw form right then you kind of see how do you massage that to get into this kind of meaningful information and then drive insights right. right so i think that's the value chain of the data to information to insights and then you talk of personalization So today with the uh, advent of uh, internet becoming ubiquitous uh, mobility all of that there a lot more data which is coming through with data points about the person the location a uh, lot more demographic information right i think that what helps uh, you to drive personalization so in the past people have been uh, looking at uh, data purely from a historic point of view yeah. like reporting analytics uh, maybe analytics just to kind of extrapolate in terms of predicting uh, what could happen for the future for the business or more in terms of decision making decision support so called so, decision so support demand prediction demand and prediction that kind of a thing but never to drive personalization towards a consumer right i think that is what has shifted towards Got the it. last two decades sure. uh, in terms of a journey so i think that opportunity is huge but obviously the quality of data uh, is key and how do you then translate that data into information insights uh, to drive that personalization is also important uh, say for a company that's a little overwhelmed by this this journey right data uh, you can you can turn it into information you can even turn some data into insights we've all been used to as companies doing this with uh, our financial data right um how does one build that capability that culture of uh, being able to turn data into something useful the the key ingredient to that is to have a culture of uh, driving innovation also right? right the 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 important aspect is if you don't uh, see there is an opportunity to create value mm-hmm. you will not then lean towards or look at data in any other way sure right so i think the important thing is to understand like i think uh, we we kind of also discuss in terms of uh, either incremental or disruptive innovation you are looking at okay these are my core areas of my business these are my core products and services these are my core competencies is there anything i could do in the adjunct area right or can i leap frog into a new area so the the data points also gives you that ability to then do a discovery so what we call the design thinking uh, approach or looking at a person as different personas right now you might say okay i am uh ramesh shamugunathan who is a father of two kids right so i i am also an employer right i am also a student so the issue is if you then start dissecting me a hey, ramesh anuganathan in terms of different personas 
the the how you would translate the data into information and insights also would take different paths sure right i think that is what organizations struggle to master so yeah so you you're suggesting there's data there is information there is insight then you talk personalization and and that is Uh, not really an understanding of okay i'm talking to ramesh here but yes. really which aspect exactly. of ramesh am i exactly. addressing exactly you know exactly. why is that useful how is that powerful so 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 how is it powerful is is because of this say for example now you are looking at data points to either discover uncover me right so it's a it's a label to say ramesh anugunathan date of birth address telephone number it's just a label So, what part of me do you want to understand? Right, right. That depends on what products and services are you trying to sell, mm-hmm. and also potentially what more can you do with me, right? So, if you are saying you want to get a 360 view of Ramesh Anugunathan, you also need to then understand: Hey, is Ramesh Anugunathan just one persona, or is a? Am I to understand multiple personas that he might have, which might be useful to me? Mm. Yeah. Right. So then, your your the raw data that you gather may not be adequate because that might be only relevant to a single person. Then you might look at stitching the external data to get get to that uh, you know extended mm. uh, information. Mm. So I think that's where the strategy is uh, important. I think that's where if you look at even what we advocate as as John Kizaiti when mm. we kind of uh, uh, look at. personalization look at uh, data driven organization we look, look at advocating to customers to look at where exactly do they want to traverse mm. and what kind of products and services are they offering mm. and what and what is the future plan mm. so that the data journey could evolve right you uh, discussed with us previously and mentioned uh, the four stages of the data maturity model right it is a data maturity model more in terms of how customers could evolve into right uh, data driven organization sure so if if an organization is faced with this challenge and and wants to hyper personalize right and uh, how does uh, t- talk to us about this four stages of the maturity model just define the concepts for us and then let's see if we sure. can discuss so i think the, the main main thing is in terms of ensuring that the customer has a, a digital identity right with you right because that is that is crucial as much as a citizen having a digital identity in the digital world then you're looking at all the transactions that customer is having with you so that is would be your core right so you build a, a core knowledge base or or database in terms of all the past data that you have around this customer id right then you're looking at now i am in a in a world where i don't stand alone mm. so how do i connect the dots which are relevant to me so then you got to get in get on to the highway that's the cloud right so which is an aggregator of all of the data or potential your go to platform to acquire third party data sure right so then you will look at uh, either adopting a hybrid cloud environment or a private cloud uh, kuma public cloud environment so that you set the stage in terms of being able to acquire the data points that you would need the next phase is is where you're then driving your platforms and ecosystems to create the personalized product or a service right like if you take uber for example right so they give your identity to you they give identity to the cab cabby right so then the marriage happens on the platform sure based on whether you're wanting to order food whether you want to take a taxi ride or any other service they could provide so they can keep expanding the ecosystem provided which persona you they are serving so if ramesh and mangal wants to eat mm. he's hungry there is uber eats he wants to take a ride there is uber maybe in future he wants to do banking there could be a digital wallet sure right so the the opportunity in terms of disruptive innovation is there the because the more data points you gather you can say hey i have an opportunity here to launch another product mm. or another service on the same platform so i think that's the whole huge opportunity for the disruptive innovation as well as driving hyper personalization because you 
you're gathering data and you know every time he books a Uber or Uber is he's paying through a credit card. So you say, okay, there's an opportunity for maybe a payment instrument, right? So I think that's the opportunity as you uncover more and more data, you have enough data points to define who this persona is or who this person is. So, so we come up to the customer. Uh, is there another stage for a company? You know, you, you have managed to personalize uh, the experience or hyper personalize the experience. Um, how do you scale this? How do you grow this? Ecosystems. So I think that's where you then try to leverage each other's assets and say Uber could partner with like, you know, now they are uh, partnering with say supermarkets to deliver groceries, right? So they could all now they are obviously, obviously uh, partnering with uh, food chains, right? So what more can they leverage the assets or others' assets to give a service? Right? It could be even last mile delivery of any other thing, even could be Kiehl's groceries, right? So the opportunity is limited only by imagination. Mm. But the question is, is there scale in that opportunity? Would you, would you do that unless there is scale, right? So I think that's the whole question in terms of ecosystem is, it's just an API call away. It's just a connection away in the cloud. But what is the business dynamic which is going to drive that? Right. You know, again, now what you're saying, uh, if, if data was looking like it's a little overwhelming, you know, getting to uh, information, uh, insights and personalization is, is overwhelming for companies. Uh, this four stages of maturity you're talking about, the core, the cloud, the customer and, and, and an ecosystem. Uh, can be can sound like incredibly difficult to do or incredibly uh, beyond the realm of immediate reach how does uh, how does a company what does a company need for this transformation assume you have a willing CEO who's understanding the vision what does a company need does it need for sure tech but does it need other capabilities a mindset yeah obviously mindset? I think the uh, in, in terms of if we want to be a data driven organization, there has to be a cultural shift in terms of looking at data in, in different light. Right. Because that's going to be your kind of raw material, so to sure. speak. Right. So so then we get into kind of the entire data science in terms of uh, artificial intelligence, uh, building the mathematical models, because the whole whole operation then shifts in terms of you building a superhuman to do correlate all this data spontaneously because you're here trying to create the product spontaneously on a platform based on dynamics, based on uh, things which would change and which sometimes you may not be able to predict, mm -hmm. right? So the, the entire modeling, the, the, that AI capability is very core to this personalization because human beings can't sit and crunch this and offer that at the speed that AI could do. Okay, L let's get to AI, but uh, let's also look at this, you know, the CEO who's, who sees the potential and then, you know, does he then say to somebody, you know, okay, try to lead this initiative, you know, is, is that sort of so, thinking? So, working? yeah, I think the, the whole uh, uh, stepping stone to that is what I call the design thinking mm. uh, philosophy, right? So, what you have to try to understand is, is there an unaddressed component in in that market based on the data points which you're which are looking at to see okay what are we doing today with this consumer and what are the points of friction so that right. is the easiest way to identify is there something that we could do to simplify the product and service that he's consuming or eliminate the points of friction so looking at the points of friction in the current journey of the customer so that is where i, I talk of uh, design thinking and journey mapping Right. So you map the customer's current journey with the data points and see, is there, a, is there an opportunity for me to innovate by either taking the point of friction, simplifying it or enhancing his experience. So I think that, that would be the first step. Then you will know, okay, what kind of data do I need? What do I need to do with my product or service? And what kind of models do I need to build to kind of fulfill that whole thing? Talk to me about the culture you need to make this work. Right, is, is realization and seeing opportunity uh, in a company enough? Is yeah, I think that's going to be the, the most challenging part because there are three shifts which are happening in organizations 
who are traditional versus who are moving towards either driven organization because today traditional organization drives efficiency whereas data driven organization drives intelligence right traditional organization takes pride in the assets right data driven organization pushes facts sure and traditional organizations look for customer loyalty sure data driven organization looks for customer empowerment right right so these are the three shifts right which are necessary if you want to move a traditional organization to data driven organization sure and very significant three steps and right? then, then this is not easy to get into your head exactly. into your dna exactly. for some reason because here you're saying in the past you're saying traditional organization i am in the driving seat i will deliver what you want huh. here you're in the customer you're in the driving seat you drive yourself i will give you all the tools right so that's that two ends of the continuum right yes. so it's a, it's a vast shift in terms of culture capability competency uh and the platform the tech brilliant so so this is this is a transformation that will have to go to the core of the organization exactly. it it, exactly. it potentially something that that's why it's easily easily spoken than done done and most most don't succeed because of that massive transformation you got to drive right uh, as as we wrap up let's talk about and you touched on this the role that artificial intelligence uh, can play or deploying ai uh in a data rich environment um define for us the potential if if we are again addressing hyper personalization how how does one leverage something like ai so the uh, the opportunity i think arises in all three areas that i i spoke of uh efficiency to intelligence assets to access then loyalty to empowerment so if you look at uh most organizations use ai in traditionally to drive efficiency automate okay repetitive functions uh, uh chatbots right we know rhetoric questions we know the answer program it okay they get get it on a chatbot right but if you are driving intelligence then you got to then anticipate questions which have not been asked also right then you got to build heuristics you need to build a model to look at information and then be able to train the train the ai engine mm. to be able to answer a variety of questions right so the complexity from efficiency to intelligence is tenfold same with access to access right so if you are saying if i have to predict where this guy is going to be right to ensure that information that i am giving say if i am asking for weather information sitting in colombo will be different matri will be different so the personalization is in terms of where am i right so so that that complexity increases many fold right otherwise you are assuming okay he is ordering he is at his residence because that's only address i have right same way from loyalty to empowerment loyalty you are saying okay i have i have what you spend and i know this is your loyalty proportional to what you spend with me in empowerment you don't know what is what what am i going to order next on uber i don't know yesterday you consumed a burger today i don't know what you're going to order right but i want to give you a variety sure right so the the whole modeling algorithms have to change in terms of how do you see this person as ramesh anugunathan the persona and the personalization is for the persona not for the person right so the data you got to acquire the models you have to build and depending on what problem you are trying to solve for whom is it for the supplier is it for the consumer is it for the supply chain right so i think that's where the the complexity st- starts brilliant in in wrapping up this conversation anything you want to add uh, ramesh we covered uh, fair i would i would think that every organization ought to be looking at uh data as a as the key asset to leverage and they should start the journey in laying the foundation and uh, looking at at least doing a journey mapping looking at the points of friction simplifying the journey for the customer and and looking at putting the customer on the driving seat in whatever way possible so that the journey could start in terms of driving the data driven organization ramesh shanmugam as always an insightful chat thank you thank you